headlines today, Yoruba secessionists vows to hold Lagos rally despite arrest order. National Conscience Party rejects political party defection. And on the international scene, Afghan forces take over a military base after U.S. NATO leave. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Aisha Salihu. In battle of self-acclaimed Yoruba secessionist, Sunday Igboho has vowed to go on with his Yoruba Nation rally scheduled to hold in Lagos on Saturday. Department of State Services, the SS, had on Thursday raided the Ibadan residence of Igboho, killing two of his supporters and arresting 13 others. The DSS has also launched manhunt for Igboho after it recovered arms, ammunition and charms in his house. In a Facebook post of Igboho's spokesperson, Olaya Mikoiki, it insisted the rally will hold as scheduled. A member of the Special Committee on Petroleum Industry Bill in the House of Representatives, Kingsley Uju, said 5% provisions made in the bill will address the agitations by host communities and ensure participation in oil and gas activities. Ujo said Section 240 has given host communities impetus and power, as well as an enabling environment for them to participate in the activities being carried out with their resources. The lawmaker added that the BIB would actually entrain profitability, viability of the oil and gas sector in the country. Chairman of the National Conscience Party, Dr. Yunus Atanko, says the faction of Zamfara State Governor Bello Matawale to the APC from his former party, the PDP, is hurting democratic principles and therefore not acceptable. Um, my name is Dr. Yunus Atanko. I'm the National Chairman of the National Conscience Party, NCP. Uh, I was a presidential candidate in the 2019 general election. I was a member of the National Peace Committee, uh, led by former Head of State, General Abdusalamu Abubakar. And uh, I was the Chairman of the Inter-Party Advisory Council, uh, IPAC, 2014 and 2015. And presently, I'm still the Chairman of the National Conscience Party, as well as the spokesperson of the National Consultative Front, popularly known as NC Front led by former Speaker of the Federal House of Representatives, Alajigali Umar Naabba, and Professor Pat Etomi, uh, a renowned scholar and, and a political uh, economist who stand for election in Delta State. So that, in a summary, is uh, who I am at the moment. Well, uh, to answer your question with regard to the issue of political defection, I think um, should be said, this political defection has really endangered our democracy for a very long time. I mean, take a look at it. The issue about contesting election is about you selling your party manifestos to the electorate who will see value in that particular uh, manifesto, then vote for you at the end of it, electing you to represent that interest of the manifesto which you sold to them as a social contract. But here we are in Nigeria, where a candidate of a political party, even though some of them do not even, they come with their different manifesto, will sell a manifesto of a political party, i.e. political party A, and then probably if he has a little bit of challenge within his own party, he will now run off in the evening and join political party B, carrying the same manifesto, into a new political party, and then still retaining that seat in which he won election. It is basically treasonable against the people in which you have that particular social contract with. So democratically, it's absolutely unacceptable. Although there have been a caveat being put in it in the, in the Electoral Act, saying that if you have an issue within your party, then you can now defect to another political party calling the freedom of association. But this freedom of association is not absolute. What it does is endanger the democratic system, reduce the political parties for working so hard to sell in that particular candidate and for that particular candidate to still retain his seat. It's absolutely unacceptable. And that is the reason why it is very important that the new electoral act that has been discussed at the National Assembly 
should expunge this particular part of the Electoral Act so that anybody who wins election under a political party must remain within that political party, thick or thin, so that he can settle with the responsibility of that particular political party. But if it happens that he has to leave that political party, let him leave that his seat and go out. And if he wants to contest again, let him contest under the new political party that he wants to contest under and sell a new manifesto, then he can contest for that seat. If he's popular, then he can redeem that particular seat, but not the kind of situation in which we have today. Because those are the reasons why INEC used to deregister political parties. I give you a clear example of my political party. We won a seat in the Federal House of Representatives in Ekiti State. After winning the election in Ekiti State, our candidate left the party to join PDP and then leaving us in follow. Had it been we have maintained our seat at that particular point in time, we wouldn't have been the registered or being challenged by INEC as the case may be. So these are some of the challenges that we face in the democratic system. So as far as the campaign on political candidate is, is totally unacceptable and it should be expunged from the Electoral Act. Anybody who wants to leave his party, leave his party and go and queue for another year or two before you can, that will show discipline in the electoral system. Away from political matters, the news of withdrawal of Abuja Municipal Area Council's Marshall Guards is exciting to motorists and other vehicle owners in Abuja. Although enforcement of compliance with traffic regulation is the reason behind the establishment of the marshals, many motorists complain against excesses of the marshals. The aim of imposing compliance with safe road usage by the AMEC Marshals Guard may have been defeated following the outcry of commuters on their unruly activities, contrary to their primary assignments. If they stop you, they say maybe two of you or three, one of Taizi Park, they are ready to fight them, they will leave you. For you that maybe they stop you, you just do like gentle boy or gentleman, they will harass you. And I don't even see their work. Some of them, they, they arrest the driver, carry him to another corner, and evaluate this person and charge the person. You understand? So, which is very, very bad. This morning, John Task Force come, the same thing I called yourself, how my car said, John Task Force, embarrassing us, coming to our pit, carry back. We see sometimes we pay 25,000, 30,000 to just to have a freedom. So, it's not fair. In reaction to the rage, Mohammed Kabiru Abubakar, a media assistant who spoke on behalf of the AMAC chairman, Abdullahi Kandido, said a directive has been given for the immediate withdrawal of AMAC Mashal guards from all transport activities in the area council. There are some cries here and there and some little complaint. Therefore, the chairman has to listen to the cry of the people and also do the wish of the people if it is for the public of the interest if, if, if it is for the interest of the public so dissolving then is for the interest of the general public he added that the guards had been redeployed to continue with their statutory functions of augmenting the efforts of the conventional security to protect lives and property of residents the primary responsibility is to make sure that they work as amak marshal's guard work in hand in hand with the conventional uh, what do they call it security agents like the police security dss and others some residents however commended the new development as a step in the right direction i have to recommend the, commend the chairman for taking that action because they have been causing nuisance to transporters transporters have been crying for a long time i think uh, the disbandment of uh, Amak Masha unit. I want to believe the executive chairman with his team in their wisdom was thought good. The incessant misbehavior and insubordination on the parts of Amak Masha guards has left motorists wondering whose interests they're really protecting. But with the recent intervention of the withdrawal of these guards, motorists would finally have a chance at free movement within the city. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Coming up after the break, Chief Imam blames parents for massive jump failure. Stay with us. My name is Samuel Dada. Yakubu Isa. And I'm not a video DJ. And you know Mufa. Stephen Omoni. 
You think for private jobs, sometimes you get employed and the process of payment, you know, you undergo some kind of stress. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Here is a recap of some of our top stories. Yoruba secessionist Sunday Igboho vows to hold Lagos rally as the Department of State Services declares him wanted. National Conscience Party rejects political party defection of Zamfara State Governor. Moving on to more stories, ahead of official coronation of the 15th Fulani Emir of Kano, Aminu Ado Bayoro, a special prayer session is held in the ancient city to herald the reign of the new king. Sultan of Sokoto Sa'ad Abubakar and Governor Abdullahi Ganduje are among hundreds of faithfuls that attended the session. <laughs> Kano State Chief Imam Professor Sani Zaharadin offering an opening prayer to commence the session which is seen as an important moment for the coronation of Emir Amina Adobairo. <laughs> Governor Abdullahi Ganduje prays for successful ceremony and a continued peace and stability across Kano State and Nigeria. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Sultan of Sokoto in his prayer asked the people of the state to continue to live in peace with one another, regardless of ethnic or tribal differences. Less than 24 hours to the coronation, visitors, other traditional rulers, Friends and well-wishers are already trooping to Kano to be part of the ceremony, which is coming a year since the appointment of Amina Ado Bayeru as the 15th Emir of Kano. <laughs> it raised to green. Trust TV News. Kano. The chief imam of Apollo Legislative Quarters Mosque, Noura Khalid, said massive failure recorded in the just-concluded JAMB examination is due to lack of proper parental training and dysfunctional educational system. The Imam said this in his Friday sermon to Muslim Umar. And the message is about um, parental responsibility because we have observed that there is a setback in the result of 
jump this year. And um, many concerned Nigerians are asking questions. Whose uh, fault is this? Um, uh, for me, I think it's better to address the parents to take their responsibility very well. We have a series of uh, factors that affected the examination, among which is the use of Internet. If uh, parents are uh, taking their responsibility serious, they will control how their children use Internet. Away from Nigeria, all United States and NATO forces in Afghanistan have evacuated the Bagram airfield near the Afghan capital, Kabul, handing over the largest coalition, coalition base to the Afghan government troops. A local television station quoted unnamed officials from the Afghan Defense Ministry as saying that the Afghan National Defense and Security Forces have taken full control of the military base after two decades of foreign forces. In the world of sports, breastfeeding athletes will be allowed to bring children to the Tokyo Olympics when necessary. Organizers have announced after the criticism from mothers over tough rules on bringing families to the Games. The clarification is a welcome relief for some athletes, but United States football star Alex Morgan slammed organizers for keeping her in the dark about the criteria. And in entertainment news with a sad story, Kano Film Industry is mourning the death of veteran Kanyewood actress Zainab Booth. Zainab died on Thursday in Kano after undergoing brain surgery, according to reports. On that note, we have come to the end of Trust TV News Update. Ensure to stay safe, stay healthy, and remain patriotic. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Trust TV News. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thanks for joining us.